I'm trying, I would like, I'd like very much to write a story about this, okay, but I really need some information before I do. Yeah. Now, I need, to, I need to understand, and I'm feeling a bit like a, an endangered species around <laughs> here at the moment. I, I, I really need to understand what happened, why those photos didn't come, didn't come out before they did. Now, you said that, they, that, the, um, uh, that the photographer took them to the DA's office in 82 and 85, and the DA wasn't interested. 95. No, I'm sorry, 92, no, 82, 82 and 95. 92 and 95, yeah. 82 and 95. 95 was the second time that the case really yeah. got into the news, and Polakoff, Polakoff is a freelance photographer, news photographer. Right. He had photos. He, what those guys do is they go, they, they have the, uh, you know, the radio, and they listen to the police. He heard right. the... Uh, as as Lynn did also, he heard about the shooting. He raced over there. He took the pictures. He offered them to the Inquirer, and it, which didn't use them. And he offered them to the DA because he thought he had crime photos. He might right. be able to sell them. That's what right. he was doing. He right. was trying to make some money, okay. and and they didn't buy them. They also didn't tell the defense that they existed, which is questionable because they didn't know they existed. They he tried again when it became news mm -hmm. in '95. Mm -hmm. The DA didn't want them. He didn't offer them to the defense because he wasn't interested in the defense. And after that, he forgot about them because but that, but they that's were, the bit that surprises me. It's not no, an he, interesting story for yeah, him. He he, he, he doesn't have he, 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 he must have known what a high profile case this was and how. Yeah, but, but up until so why up until he come forward. But with no, sir. Up until from I've, I've I've talked to Mr. Polakoff a, a couple of times, mm -hmm. and up until him being contacted. In 2006, and the person you've heard mentioned here, uh, Dr. Michael Schiffman, the, one who wrote, the German uh, uh, linguist who wrote the book uh, on this, up until the time that he had been contacted by Mr. Schiffman, see, uh, uh, one or two of these photos were on Polakoff's website. He's a, a freelance photographer, so here's an array of my work. They were found on there, and Schiffman started talking to him and saying, well, do you really realize what you have? And at that point, he's saying, well, listen, you know, from my understanding of the case, the uh, passenger was the shooter. I just thought it was, was Abu Jamal because that's the guy who they were arrested. And, and Shipman said, no, 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 this is what's going on with the case. Let me give you some information. And then that's how they came forward. So for the time, uh, from the time that he shot the photos up until 2006, he made his effort. He did what he felt was his... Uh, citizen duty to make these available to the district attorney's office. They turned them down. If they weren't important to them, then they really weren't important to him. Mm -hmm. And they were consistent in that, that um, kind of like stiff arm was consistent with what he had heard police say at the time mm -hmm. that, you know, open and shut, Abu Jamal's the guy. Mm -hmm. and, and why didn't he provide a, attempt to provide them to the defense? Because he said that after he presented them to the district attorney's office, or, or made an effort in 1982, and they didn't say anything, and he feeling that Abu Jamal was in fact the person who did the shooting, why would he try to help the defense? That's what he said. Did you have to pay he's not a, by the way, he's not a pro, he's never been a yeah. pro-Mumia guy. That was the other thing. Yeah. It wasn't like this was some lefty who thought, oh, I have stuff here that could exonerate him or that raises questions. He wasn't thinking that way. This is a guy who's been consistently very pro-police, very pro-prosecution. He had connections in the DA's office. That's why he brought them the pictures. And so he just never thought that way. That's the thing. He was sought out by uh, Schiffman. You say you paid for the pictures? For their use? Um, yeah, when we, when we printed those posters, um, the week of the May 17th hearings, we paid for the use of them on the, um, on the poster and at, keep the poster on our website. So he retains copyright for Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> I think a question should be here is why didn't the police utilize those pictures? Sure. And it's very simple, you know, behind the fact that it shows very clearly that they were lying. Mm -hmm. And I think that they need to be approached mm -hmm. about what they did and also the other mainstream media and all about these pictures. Why haven't they seen it as important like they see this, they got this line in the paper about <coughs> Maureen saying widow links streets to Abu Jamal case. You know, and it's the most ridiculous thing 
that's written there, but here you have pictures to show that a crime scene was changed, mm -hmm. evidence that the police had, and all that showed that, you know, nothing happened the way they said it happened, mm -hmm. and there's nothing. And then the question is never, you know, why, you know, why these things, but it's always pointed to, you know, well, why didn't he do this, and why didn't he do that? Why didn't they do it? what it was that they were supposed to do. They are legally bound to do this. This man wasn't bound to do anything. He did what he thought was right. But what about the other people? And this is the point that we make about media. And our media is just like the woman that's, you know, that was being raped or something. And all they want to like, well, why did you wear that dress like this and this and that? But make the points on both sides. And I really thank you, um, for, you know, bringing that up, which allows us, you know, in this dialogue to make it plain, you know, what's going on here so we can see our faults and, you know. I, I by the way, I wish I'd known about it because in 2003, when I was doing my book, my publisher wanted pictures of the crime scene. I went to the, to the you know, I, the, the DA's office would not let me have crime scene photos. And, uh, and I, my relationship with Mumia's defense people at the time was not very good, so because I had just, just said that his two attorneys were uh, not death penalty experts and had lied about what they knew, so I couldn't get them from them. That was I went wrong. Yes, Ron. and then I went to uh, the uh, appellate court where the thing was was sitting, and I tried to get the pictures out of the file. They'd been stolen out of the file. They're gone. There's no crime pictures with his file that moves with the court. So I was desperate to get photographs for illustrating the book. Mm -hmm. And what I ultimately had to do was to, uh, to you know, really illegally uh, copy photos out of another book, which was the uh, Dan, Dan uh, Williams book, mm -hmm. you know, and use them. Their, their, their pictures themselves belong to the, uh, their, he got them from the defense. He has them, and, uh, or had them. And so he had them in his book, and I figured, well, the copyright's really not his, so I just copied those and used them. But if I had known about Polakoff, I would have loved to have had those. It was just not available. You know, it's not the only time that you know, they, you know, they've done this. And all the issue with the bullet, and all when the um, person who wrote down that the bullet was a 44, it changed when it got into the hands of the police. Oh, okay. And not only did that change, but the disappearance of the parts to the bullet. Oh, okay. That didn't happen in, with Mumia people, and all that happened in the hands of the police. The same people who hid the evidence of these pictures is the same people with a missing part of the bullet. You know what I mean? How do you wind up losing something that important? And another thing that you just never pointed out, they say that, you know, they talk about Mumia and a paraffin test to show that, you know, um, he shot, um, Faulkner wasn't there, but they claim Faulkner shot Mumia. Yeah. What about his paraffin test? What about the fingerprints on his gun? You know, mm -hmm. there's so many things to point out here. You know, why wasn't that done? Because that is a part of that case. You know? Evidence covered up. 